I'm now going to show you how many different ways you can use the set of shutter card templates. Now the templates basically come in three sizes. Now here's the baby one and as you see it's got the nice shutter action. It's great for all your little pictures and small peel-offs. So that's size number one. Now this is size number two and again you see we work the same way. So we've given you three different sizes in here because it's quite amazing the different things you can do with three different sizes. We all have different pictures, different decoupage that we wish to use. So this is our biggest one which goes in a DL envelope. Our second size one also gives in a DL envelope and the baby one that I showed you first of all will go in a C6 envelope. Now of course I'm not going to just show you how to do a basic shutter card. I'm also going to be showing you how you can double it up into this. Now this is using the medium template and look at this. So that's so much fun and it still fastens and goes in a C5 envelope. So that's the medium one. Here's the huge one. Now if you put a lot of decoupage on here or a lot of thicknesses you may be better off putting it in either one of our C5 box slope envelopes or actually in a box itself. So this is the double one and that's in the largest size and here's the double one in the baby size. So now you have three double ones you can do but I'm going to double that straight away to say well that's actually six and with the first three I've already shown you nine because you could decorate that side. So it's up to you which side you decorate. So that's doing it as a double. Now to whet your appetite a little bit more. Easel cards are very fashionable at the moment. And here is an easel card that I've made using the shutter card template. And as you see, it folds forward and goes flat into a deal envelope. And it pulls out to make an easel card. And that's it in its largest format. And here's baby. There's baby one. So isn't that cute? And again, you can do that. And I'll show you how to make the folds different so we can do this. But you're getting to know me now. That's not all from me, from the same set of templates. Here we have a pop-up box card, which folds flat and still goes into a DL envelope. So I'll open that up again for you and I'm going to show you all the different ways to achieve this. Once you've done these, you can use these as slip covers for other things. You could actually make it into a little house or dog kennel card. So there's something else that you could do with it which is quite fun. Still folds flat. Look at this one. This one takes an Easter egg. So this is using the largest size of the three templates to make an Easter egg cover. But even more fun using the smallest size one, a wine bottle cover. So it just slips on and off to a small wine bottle, an average wine bottle. Or if you wish to use this on a beer bottle, just attach ribbons to the top and the bottom and pull it a bit tighter and it will actually fit a beer bottle. Now isn't that more fun than just shoving it in a bottle bag? Right, now I'm going to get on to showing you how to achieve all these different looks. I'm going to show you the three sizes of template. First of all, the largest one is the orange coloured one, which fits an A4 perfectly. The next size is clear and is smaller than an A4, but you will still need a piece of A4 card to create it. And lastly is the little green one, which will create card, a card out of a piece of A5. If I pop that onto there, you can see it doubles over and you can create an A5 finished card. So now I'm going to do the demonstration, doing the largest one for you, which is on A4 card. You'll notice that the template actually has two slices in it and the slices here are very close to the edge of the template and here they're further away. The ones that are closest to the edge of the template go to the centre of the card. So if I place the template upon the card like so, I'm going to mark the lines and the notches all on the card. Now on the inner side 
of the slices here and here it's actually a small bobble area and this will help you line it up perfectly because this section of template is wider than A5. A5 is actually from this little hole here to the edge of the template so thereby flipping it over and taking it from the other extreme edge of the A4 card we will find that this little bobble area here is right in the end again and we pop our pencil lines in all the way across and our notches. Now once I remove the template what we will see now is that the notches on the edge here come from the penciled line and only point to the outer edge and the same here. This is a total mirror image. So therefore we must remember that we only actually score between notch and notch. So therefore I'm going to start on the pencil line to the outer edge. And again here, start on the pencil line to the outer edge. The next set of notches we come to, they actually go all the way through the centre pencil lines. So we can pop them in place and this time we can score all the way through. Remember we flipped the template over, therefore it's a mirror image and we could come to this section here again and score all the way through and again remember mirror image, the last one again is as the first one was, pencil line to edge, pencil line to edge. So now we're going to slice because where there is a cut in the template there is going to be a cut actually in the card. So as you notice I am left handed and I've covered the ruler onto the card clearly showing me all the little notches and the marks which I need to be able to see so I know where I'm stopping and starting. So again I've turned it round so that the edge I wish to work on is clearly visible along the side of my ruler so I slice the lines. So I've stopped at the embossed crease lines at the edges. So there we have it, that's the hard work done. Now to the fun. When you're going to do a straightforward shutter card, we're going to start in the middle with a mountain. So I'm going to fold that in that direction. The second one, the large one, is going to be a valley. So therefore it needs to crease in the opposite direction. So we have a mountain followed by a valley. Now this section here, we're going to do the same again. Starting with a mountain and again a mountain followed by a valley. Turn it round and a valley. And again a mountain and a valley. And a mountain and a valley. So very easy to construct. Mountain valley. And there you have your basic shutter that you can decorate. So what if you had to do a double one? Well I've folded one, I've, sorry I've cut one prepared here and I'm going to fold it just the same way again. So this will help it sink in a bit better for you. So again we're going to mountain fold followed by valley fold which you will find much easier to do the big sections first. Then your small sections, mountain followed by valley and mountain followed by valley. We have the little section left here at the end, mountain and valley and mountain and valley. Now if I was going to join this, these two together to make a double, what I would do is take my other one and we can either have it so it's got an inny cross like that, so we would fasten tape just down here and then that would fasten onto there. So the one that fastens on the top is the first one to fold in. The one that fastens over the top can then go in after. So that is how you would fasten it. Don't forget you have three sizes and you still have three alternatives because you could decorate the reverse side instead of the inside. Now I'm going to discard one of these and show you how I did the other shapes. To do the easel card, all I did was place double-sided tape at the back of here and here and join these two together. 
and then I decorated it from that angle. So as you see, over it goes into a DL card and back up it comes again. So that's your easel. Again, you have three sizes for this. Now I'm going to show you how to do the bottle cover or the sleeve for your Easter egg. All we're going to do is fold it slightly different. Let's pull this big one up and fold it so that they're both mounting. Can you see a box forming here? And I'm going to pull this one and fold this little one in reverse. So we have a sleeve forming. I'm going to turn it round and I'm going to do exactly the same again. So opposite fold those on the end. So if I crease it both ways firmly, over it goes, we have a sleeve. So then you can decorate it. And this was the base for the little house, which makes a great little new home card. So this will go on here. What I've done actually is I've put some double-sided foam tape at the back. And that then will settle down. So that gives you yet another idea. There's bags of fun to be had with this. And I dare say you may even come up with other ideas. So happy crafting. Have fun.